It's really kind of sad when you can't tell the difference between atheists and theists, isn't it? When they're all doing the same thing and using the same irrational tactics. We're going to look at that today and show why all of it fails. Not that I suspect that they're going to care, because they just all really want to believe. It's dumb, no matter what side of the aisle you're on. So, as I say from time to time, we're going to do something a little bit different today, and that's look at a confused sort of atheist channel, at least confused to me, because I think so be it is weird. If you look at their videos, you get one that says they can refute God right next to a video that says that it's absolute logical proof that God exists. All of it, at least the stuff that I've seen, is garbage, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. But we're going to look at a talk between two people and show why the people who claim that atheists are making positive claims, and it doesn't matter if we're talking about the religious or otherwise, are just wrong. Ultimately, they're all doing the exact same thing anyhow. So, let's tear this apart. Okay, well, uh, a belief is simply what you think is the case. A positive belief? Yes, but that's not the only thing out there. There are also negative claims, where you assert that something is not the case. Yes, it is a positive claim, and any positive claim that something is the case or is not the case, those all bear the burden of proof. You also have to be able to show how you came to that conclusion rationally, and why others should accept it as valid. Also, there are neutral positions, which most atheists take. We don't say that there are no gods in this case, but we also don't affirm that there are. We have not been convinced that these claims made by the religious are actually true. We are not taking any positive position at all, and therefore we have no burden of proof whatsoever, and this is something that pisses the religious off to no end. Granted, I'm just getting this out of the way up front. I'm probably going to have to repeat it a fair bit, fair warning, but for the theists who watched the beginning of my video, at least they'll get some truth up front. Not that I think they're going to care, but, you know, what can you do? Whatever you think is the case, that's your belief. Great, and if you don't think that something is the case, if you're not making a positive claim for anything, then it's not a belief. It's an acknowledgement that your position is that you don't have a position. Now, the reason that the religious pull this, and I'm just speculating on what might be coming up later and trying to get it out there before the religious click off because the truth is just too uncomfortable, but the reason that they do this is because they have no way to back up their own claims. They can't show that their gods are actually real. Therefore, they just try to shift the burden of proof, a logical fallacy, to the other side. If we can't prove them wrong, they can just go on thinking they were right all along. But that is not how this works, especially since we have a zero burden of proof whatsoever. Our side isn't making a claim. We don't have to prove you wrong. You have to prove yourself right. That's how rationality works. I will wait until he gets uh, some more actual claims, though, so uh, please, good sirs, please continue. What, no matter how it's justified, that's something you've accepted that's right. to be true. That's right. right. You can have beliefs that are completely unjustified, pure blind faith, completely irrational, if you will. Um, you can have beliefs that are very, very superbly justified, but those are all species of belief. And you can believe things with great confidence or, 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 or less confidence. It's just, a belief is just your opinion on the matter, what you think is the case, to whatever degree of confidence, however well or, or poorly justified. That's just, that's what a belief is. Yes, all of that is true. I knew someone many, many, many years ago who was supremely convinced that she was a part of Starfleet. She wore a next-gen uniform everywhere, even to job interviews, and she could never figure out why she couldn't get a job. It was because she was out of her ever-loving mind. 
Now, she could spin you a plausible-sounding justification that she thought the values of Starfleet were wonderful and could change the world, and I'm not going to argue with that because it's really neither here nor there. However, that doesn't mean that Starfleet exists, or that you are somehow a member, or that there are flying spaceships running around out there someplace, or anything like that. That was where she was nuts. She was delusional. When your beliefs start to negatively impact how you view and interact with reality, you've got trouble. Just because you have a belief, that doesn't make it worthwhile. It doesn't make it true. There are plenty of beliefs that are absolutely demonstrably harmful. If you believe that you can breathe underwater and you go deep sea diving without a uh, scuba tank, then you are going to die because your beliefs, no matter how strongly held, are not rational or justifiable in reality. You should not hold that belief. That is a really dumb belief. That you do, that's a problem. But the religious don't like that, so uh, let's get back to the discussion already in progress. The question here then is where does the burden of evidence lie when you make assertions like there is a God or there's no God or something like that? With the person making the positive claim, as I said, here is where they're going to go wrong. And I can already call this, not because I've seen the video, because I haven't, but because this is a constant theist talking point. Now, I know they aren't theists, but they're thinking like theists do. They're going to claim that saying, I don't believe you, which is really what atheists are saying, is the same as saying, we believe that you are wrong. But it isn't. It is saying that you have not convinced me that your position holds any merit. You have made a positive claim, yet you have failed to present any convincing arguments or evidence necessary to convince me that you have the slightest clue what the hell you're talking about. My saying, I don't buy it, doesn't impose on me any burden of proof, but they insist that it has to because they don't want to be the only ones standing around looking stupid when they can't back up their claims. That's all this really comes down to, and I'm sure they won't agree. Would you and, consider um, saying, I believe there is a God, to be equivalent to saying there is a God? No, that is not how it works. There are two different claims being made there. One is a statement about factual reality. If I say, I have a dog, which I do, I have three, it is a statement about what actually exists in the real world and I can prove it. I could post pictures of my dogs, as I have done in the past. If I say, well, I believe I have a dog, that's not the same thing. It's a mental state. I have in my head the belief that I do, in fact, have a dog. Now, I might not actually have a dog, but I have a belief that I do. Two different things. Now, an intelligent person would show how their mental state accurately maps onto demonstrable reality by actually producing their dog. See, I have a dog. There it is. My belief is justified and validated in reality. I'm not hallucinating. I'm not delusional. Nobody should accept that what you believe is actually true unless you have the capability to back it up. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to do so if other people are willing to accept your claims, but if they're not, you damn well better be willing to trot that dog out. Saying, I believe I have a dragon is complete nonsense until you can produce the dragon. If I say, I don't believe you in response to your dragon claim, I don't have to prove that you're wrong. I don't have to prove you don't have a dragon. It's a challenge for you to prove yourself right. Meet it or fail. It's really not that hard to understand. Yeah, of course, because to say that you believe there is a God is to say you believe the proposition, there is a God. But that still doesn't mean that there actually is a God. Someone can look at your empty, unsupported claim or belief, whatever, that there is a God and say, eh, I don't believe you. I have no obligation to believe you. I can call you a dirty, filthy liar if I want. It's your job to convince me that you're right. It's not my job to prove that you're wrong. 
This is the basic disconnect that we have with the religious. They are convinced, for bad reasons, that their gods exist. We are challenging their epistemology. We are telling them to justify their claims in a way that convinces us, that really convinces anybody. They are refusing because, as we know, they just can't do it. And that's why they play these word games. I think we'd all understand that someone who says, I have a dog, or I believe I have a dog, that is making a positive claim about objective reality, and thus it has a burden of proof associated with it. Granted, you might not ask them to justify it. You could just choose to say, well, you say you have a dog, it's not a difficult claim to make, lots of people have dogs, I'm just not going to challenge it. You're perfectly welcome to do that. But you could do that if you wanted to. It's not, well, it's a normal claim, so nobody gets to question it. That's not how that works. If you ask for justification and you're perfectly justified in doing so, then they would have to do so in order to convince you that they were telling the truth. If not, then you have no obligation whatsoever to take any of their claims seriously. That makes them uncomfortable, so they have to run around with the goalposts some more, which I figure these two are going to do. But that only speaks to your belief, not to the truth of, of the objective truth of reality. But right? when you say there is a God, all you are expressing is the belief that there is a God. Every proposition where you say, this is a glass, this is a shirt, this is a human head, whenever you say something like that, you could just as easily preface it with, I believe this is a glass, I believe this is a shirt, I believe this is a human head. Whoever makes an assertion, whatever the assertion is, positive or negative, that person, when they make the assertion, they have a burden of evidence. But we're not doing that, are we? We are saying, I don't believe you. We're not saying you're wrong, or that's not a fill in the blank. We are asking for your rational justification that the claim that you have made is actually true in the real world. That's why you need to provide evidence for it, and that's what you are simply incapable of doing when it comes to your gods. If I said, well, I don't believe that's a glass, well, you could just hand me the glass. I could hold it up, like he did, I could examine it for myself, and I could make my own determination. Is it a glass or is it not a glass? Now, sure, I could say, well, that's not a glass, that's a tumbler, which is just a linguistic disagreement, but at least we would be having that discussion about something that we could both demonstrate is actually real. Now, do that with a god. You can't. We all know that's what this whole thing is getting at, so let's not pretend otherwise. We are asking for your justifiable reasons why you think that there is a God, and you have nothing of any demonstrable substance to offer. You just really like the idea, but liking the idea, just like liking the idea that you have a dragon, is irrelevant. Your feelings are meaningless. So let's get away from this nonsense and address something actually real. I kind of doubt they will, though, but uh, what do you think? But not all burden of evidences are, are going to be the same. Uh, some are harder than others. You know, when you say there's a God, that's a pretty tall burden of evidence. When I say there's no God, burden of evidence is a lot lighter. No, it's actually not. Because you have to define what kind of God you're talking about. Sure, if you're looking at this rock is a God, then that's probably not that hard, especially since there's no rock in evidence. But if you say that there's no God on a planet in a galaxy 100 trillion light years away, what are you going to do then? You can't do it. You just can't. Now, you can say, I have no reason to think that's true, which is basically what atheists are saying, and we have no burden of proof to back that up. I have no reason at all to think that there are any gods. I have no reason to think that is actually true. Provide a reason and let me evaluate it, and then I might change my mind. If you can't, then I will continue to have no reason to think that it's true. I'm not saying it isn't true. I'm saying you haven't convinced me. The failure is on your head, not mine. 
I'm just asking questions and you are failing to come up with any kind of coherent demonstrable answers. If you can't justify why you came to that conclusion with the evidence that convinced you that it's true, then why should I believe it? This is not how intelligence works, but they're going to pick up those goalposts pretty quick, I'm sure. It's how the religious tend to operate, and it's pretty dumb. Um, if I say there's Bigfoot, I burden of evidence is hard. I got to produce some evidence, some material evidence of Bigfoot. Yes, you do. But here's the thing. If you don't already have that evidence at hand, then why do you believe in Bigfoot in the first place? This is a question that comes up a fair bit, but it should come up a lot more. Why do you believe something for which you have no evidence? That goes for Bigfoot, and that goes for God, as well as a lot of other things. What is it that convinced you, rationally, that it was in fact true? And the answer is, for the vast majority of believers, nothing. Nothing at all, because they are not being rational. Most of them don't even understand what rationality is, so I'll explain at least what I mean by it, because I think that's important. Some seem to think that, well, it sounds good to me, is enough to believe a thing. It shouldn't be, with very, very few exceptions. Now, for a child that's been told that Santa Claus is real, all their friends believe in Santa Claus, they get presents under the tree with Santa's name on it, yada, 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 sure, maybe. Because they're not actually in a position at that age, nor do they have the expectations that they will be able to think about this rationally. We don't expect them to ask a lot of questions because they're children. Now, swap in an adult in the exact same conditions, everybody around them believes in Santa Claus, yada, yada, yada. Do we accept that they have a good reason to believe it's true? No, of course not. Because we hold adults to a higher epistemic standard. We expect them to be more intelligent and more skeptical. Or at least we should. If you don't, then you've got some problems too. So, when you get a theist that says, well, I believe in God and I'm rational, that is not true, at least if they're an adult. The standards that we have, they just don't work for gods, which is why the religious engage in double standards, one standard for their religion and one standard for everything else. They are just acting like children do, and we really need to stop infantilizing adults that goes for religion and everything else. Just fuck off and grow up. You'll see a lot of problems go away if they all did that. If I say there's no Bigfoot, all I've got to do is show that evidence that we ought to find of Bigfoot is not there to be found. And that's a fair point, if you can agree on what evidence ought to be found. The problem with religion is that the religious insist, by and large, that there can be no evidence for God. God is invisible and can never be detected, no matter what you do. Great, then how did you come to the conclusion that God is real? Rationally, I mean. This is why we just excise faith and fee-fees, because we're not children. We have one and only one standard, and that's all we need. If you cannot justify your belief in your imaginary friend within that one standard, then you have no business believing in it in the first place. Show me how you got to God without your faith in fifis and childhood indoctrination. Show me the specific steps how you got there so I can do the same thing and confirm your findings. And they have no interest in that, do they? That's how rational people ought to operate, but these are not rational people. That's the standard that we ought to expect, but the religious are simply incapable. They just really want to believe, and when an ever-increasing number of people don't fall for it, or worse, call them out on it, they have to invent excuses for why they fail. And that's all this video is, because they're doing the exact same thing. They can't come up to the existing standards, so they have to try to pull everybody else down to their level. And I'm sorry, but it just doesn't work that way. To say that I lack a belief in God makes it sound like I have no mental state at all with regard to the proposition God exists, at least not a doxastic mental state, which would be the relevant kind. But that's obviously not the case. It's not like I have no opinion. If a belief is a mental state in which I think something is the case, I have a belief that God doesn't exist. 
I don't give a shit about Emerson Green. He's a, another YouTube atheist who's shown up in a couple of videos that we've looked at, but I've never, ever been impressed by him. Therefore, we're just going to fast forward back to these people because that's what we're responding to. We're not responding to Emerson Green. It's just amazing how many people can't understand basic words and concepts and pretend they get to tell others what it is they actually believe because it makes them feel bad to address the actuality of it. So let's get in a little fast forwarding action and come out the other side and get back to these two. We end up um, likening ourselves to what I would call lack theism. Holy crap! That lasted forever! Well, I guess this won't be as long a video as I thought it would be. If you want to go back and watch all of that, feel free. Link, as always, is down in the description. But this is like those obnoxious atheist philosophers who think they get to tell everybody that they're not atheists because they don't follow these specific definitions that they insist just have to be right because they say so. These people are assholes. Everyone gets to define their own belief structure however they wish and attach any word to it that they want. If you don't understand what somebody means by the words that they use, ask them to define it for you. It's really not that hard. Anyhow, yes, lack theism is a pretty accurate description of what most atheists, at least the ones that I'm familiar with, engage in. Deal with it. You don't get to pretend that you get to rename them or that you get to dismiss them because you can't handle what they're actually saying. That's what's really going on here. If I tell you my position, and that's my position for anything, it doesn't really matter, but that is my position whether you like it or not. You don't get to go and tell me that I'm wrong or that that's not really what I believe or that I don't fit into a category that I say I fit into because you don't like it. You can only tell me that I'm wrong where you can demonstrate that I am factually wrong. And this is exactly where I get pissed off at the idiots running around with philosophical dictionaries and declaring everybody else to be wrong because they disagree with them. Yeah, fuck you. Language is prescriptive, not descriptive. The way that I choose to use words is the way that I choose to use words. You can take a long walk of a short pier. I don't care. If you want to have a conversation, great. Let's start off with defining terms and stick to those definitions throughout. If you're going to tell me what I actually mean because what I'm actually saying doesn't appeal to you, then this is not going to go well, is it? And that's why most theists just don't do well in conversations with the non-religious. They're not interested in what we think. They just really want to believe. Uh, you know, inanimate objects that lack a belief in God or babies and, and stuff like that. And it, this doesn't con convince anybody. It doesn't persuade people on the other side. They, all that, that we, we do when we do that is sort of discredit ourselves because it, it sounds as if we will not be bothered to defend what we think is the case. No, you just don't like the fact that we don't have to defend it. This is what happens when you live in a philosophical bubble. What you think of it is entirely irrelevant. This is the part that they don't like. They get tired of being on the hot seat, which they put themselves on voluntarily, and then suddenly it's, well, it's just not fair that other people making other choices suddenly don't have to sit on the griddle and simmer. You put yourself in that spot by taking a positive position that you cannot defend. Don't complain about me. Worry about yourself. But that's really what's going on here. They want somebody else to take the heat off of them, and they're looking in the wrong place. Try looking in the mirror. Take positions rationally that you can actually support and defend objectively. It's not our fault that you're an idiot. It's yours. Knock it off. So I would just, people who are inclined to this view, I would ask them, 
what are you? Are you a lack theist or are you an atheist? That is, do you merely lack a belief um, that there is a God in the same way that a house plant lacks a belief in God? Or do you lack a belief in a God because you have an opinion on the matter and that your, your opinion is that there isn't a God? Neither. I do have an opinion. My opinion is that the only time anyone ought to believe that a proposition is true or valid is when that proposition has been objectively defended in such a way that it appears to be true to everybody. Not just to you, to everybody. No faith, no Phoebe's involved. The failure here isn't ours, it's yours, it's that of the religious. I am taking no positive position because no positive position in this case can be rationally defended. I can't demonstrate that a god exists, and I can't demonstrate that no gods exist. Therefore, it is irrational to say either thing, and I am consistent on this. I also don't say the Bigfoot does or does not exist. I have no evidence to take either side seriously. But I'm also not taking what amounts to a faith-based position that it is true. Find evidence for either position, and I will change my mind. But until you do, I am not going to stake my claim either way. And you shouldn't either. This is what happens when you reject the emotionality of it all. You actually start to look like a rational human being. Maybe give it a shot. It might help. That's not... You don't have to sort of... That's not an allegation that you're certain of anything. You don't have to prove that gods uh, don't exist. You just have to give reasons why you think it's irrational. Uh, it's, a, it's no different than, uh, than believing or not believing in Bigfoot. And I am being entirely consistent. I had absolutely no idea he was going to bring Bigfoot up, but uh, I've already been there, so okay. Any positive position that I take in my life, I require evidence for. Every single last one of them. Even the idea that gray aliens run the government, as stupid as that is, as stupid as I think that is, I still don't take a positive position that it isn't true because I have no evidence that leads me to that end. I simply leave that in the hands of the believers to justify their case, and when they can't, I simply reject it as an unsupported idea. Now, that doesn't make it false, necessarily. It just makes it undemonstrated and thus irrational to believe in. This is how rationality works. You don't just say, will I believe? Because will I believe doesn't mean anything. Why do you believe it? And what objective demonstrable evidence can you present that would convince anyone else that you're not out of your ever-loving mind? But, of course, the religious are, and uh, some non-religious people, too. They just want to believe, but I don't care what they want to believe. I don't want to believe anything. My personal desires don't remotely enter into it. I accept what can be rationally justified. I accept that which has evidence to support it. That's it. If it can't be rationally justified, I don't accept it. There are no double standards here. My wishes and my dreams are irrelevant to reality. It just is what it is. Deal with it. So I think that atheism is a, an opinion. It is an opinion on the existence of God. It is an assertion about reality. Uh, and as such, it has a burden of evidence. But you're wrong. This is just desperately trying to force atheists into the same place that the religious have put themselves so that we can take some of the pressure off of them. And I'm sorry, but it doesn't work that way. You, the people who believe this stuff, you have the burden of proof. You are not even attempting to meet it. You just say, but it makes me feel good, which is not sufficient evidence for your claims. And then you're just screaming, look over there, so everybody will stop looking at you funny. We are not making claims about reality, though. We are saying that the claims that other people are making about reality are not intellectually convincing. Because I say that about people who actively believe no gods exist, too. How do you know that? Where is your evidence that no gods of any kind exist anywhere in reality? Because I'd love to see that, but none of them actually have any. Saying, there is no evidence for any god, so gods aren't real, that's not justified. There was a point in time when there was no evidence for atoms, but they were still there. There was a time when we have no evidence for viruses causing disease, 
but they still did, no evidence is not a reason to jump to the opposite conclusion and make a positive claim about something not being true. It's just a reason to reject the conclusion already on the table. Atheism, at least as I do it and most atheists that I meet do it, it's a neutral position. Proposition not proven. Come back when you've got something better to present. That's all it is. It's not a burden of evidence that's particularly difficult to discharge, and I don't think that we should therefore adopt a definition of atheism that characterizes us in such a way that it looks to everybody else as if we're fleeing from the little burden of evidence that we have. And nobody is doing that. We are being honest. You are the ones trying to force us into your mold, and fuck you very much. Now, if you want to do that, knock yourself out, but don't think that you can justify it. Nobody does. You're just making a fool of yourself, which is why I don't share your view. This is, as I said earlier, a problem with a lot of people, religious and atheists alike. They want everyone to be just like they are. They make up rules in their heads and insist that everybody out there has to follow them, so there. Nope. Sorry, no obligation whatsoever. This is why when people point to the Encyclopedia of Philosophy or whatever, and then they tell me, well, that's what atheism is, I tell you to go fuck yourself. I don't care about your book any more than I care about the Bible. My book says a thing means nothing for anyone. That's why these people start to sound really religious, don't they? Because, in effect, they're doing the exact same thing. They have their faith that what they're saying is automatically correct, and therefore, of course, it is. Because that's what makes them feel good. But feeling good is irrelevant. If you want to have a rational conversation with someone, you have to start by defining terms and coming to some kind of agreement in the middle what words are going to mean for the duration of that conversation. If you can't do that, if you're not willing to do that, then fuck you. It's that easy. You don't get to dictate terms. It just makes you look like an asshole. Uh, while at the same time demanding that they live up to theirs. I, I think it, we discredit ourselves when we do this. I, I think it's a, it's a big mistake. It, I think it, it, it's factually incorrect to describe ourselves that way. And um, it looks insincere. And uh, it makes us look like we don't have the courage of our convictions when we say, I don't think there's a God. Nobody cares what you think. You are the one with the problem, trying to insist that everybody has to play by your rules. Fuck you. The position that I choose to take for myself is mine, not yours. You have no say in it whatsoever. If that means you don't want to talk to me, fine. I think you're a dick anyhow. You don't get to tell me what I think, and you don't get to tell me that I'm not an atheist because I don't agree with you. I don't care about your definition. I care about what I think and what I can personally justify. And the same thing goes for the religious. Christians don't get to tell other Christians that they're not Christians. That's not your place. As far as I'm concerned, anyone who says they're a Christian is a Christian, and their Christianity doesn't impact anyone else. Everybody speaks for themselves and nobody else. What I say doesn't affect anyone else. What I say doesn't impact other atheists. It just doesn't, and neither does what you say. If you think it does, the problem is yours, not mine. Stop trying to put people in boxes to make yourself feel better. We are all individuals, and I know that scares a lot of people, but it's true. I don't care about you. I care about justifying the things in my own head as factually true in the reality that we all share. It's hard to get there, maybe, but we at least have to try. And the rest of the people out there, a lot of people out there, they don't even want to try. I am free to evaluate the things that I believe or the things that I see in my own way. Now, that doesn't make me right or wrong necessarily, but it doesn't make anyone right or wrong when we're talking about your own opinions. You have to be able to test your own opinions in your own head based on the facts that you've been presented with or that you've seen to see if it stacks up against objective reality. We're only talking about reality here, not your feelings, not your faith, not anything that you want to be true. We're talking about reality. That ought to matter. Now, 
I know this guy doesn't necessarily give a shit and I don't care. I've seen plenty of these people in the past and I just laugh at them. They mean nothing at all to me. And I don't think they should really mean anything to you. But of course, that's up to you to decide. Like the religious, they are just trying to make everyone just like they are. And it doesn't work that way. These are irrational atheists. I hope nobody's at all surprised.